First of all, I'm Brad. I am one of the co-founders at Unstoppable Domains. Uh, we build domains on blockchains, so uh, domain registries, which are uh, smart contracts on blockchains, domains are NFTs. And I'm um, talking today about how blockchain domains plus IPFS uh, gets you a decentralized website. Uh, so we build uh, domain registries. We have two registries, .crypto and .zill. Uh, we also have a registrar, like our version of GoDaddy, uh, called at unstoppabledomains.com. And we also have decentralized web tools. So uh, things like uh, we have a demo browser, uh, which is a open source a fork of Chromium. We have uh, browser extensions. We have a marketplace of IPFS templates, uh, IPFS deploy tools, and uh, libraries for domain resolution. Uh, so why do we need a decentralized web? Well, the current DNS system is easily censored. Uh, it relies on registrars, which are mandatory custodians of domain names, uh, like .com domain names, all uh, traditional domain names. Uh, registries can revoke domains or they can be taken down. Uh, and hosting services can take, con can take content completely offline, um, not just off of their platform. Uh, and so decentralized websites, websites are an alternative because domains are NFTs. Uh, no custodian is required. You can store your domain inside of your wallet. So .crypto domains you store inside of an Ethereum wallet. Um, blockchain domain registries like Unstoppable Domains and ENS, they can't revoke your domain. Uh, and the hosting is on uh, decentralized storage networks like IPFS instead of on uh, centralized hosting providers. So that's why blockchain domains uh, plus IPFS equal decentralized websites. Uh, so I thought I would just show everybody the product real quick, if that's all right. Uh, so this is unstoppabledomains.com. You can search for a domain. So this is basically how you would expect a domain registrar to work. You can check out. You can, of course, pay in crypto. We just use a Coinbase Commerce widget right now, so these are the uh, these are the defaults. Hopefully, we can get Filecoin in there too, though. Uh, we've got credit card, we've got PayPal, and once you bought a domain, you claim the domain to your wallet, and then you can manage. And manage means that you add crypto addresses to your domain name, uh, so that you can receive money. You can receive Bitcoin, ETH, Litecoin, you can receive any cryptocurrency uh, and add IPFS hashes uh, so that you have websites. So what you do is you add an address, you click save, you sign a message with your private key. Uh, a lot of people use MetaMask uh, that writes that information to the blockchain and then an application can look that back up. I'm just gonna show you a GIF real quick. Uh, hopefully this is big enough for everybody to see, but if you type in brad.crypto, into Trust Wallet, then you can pay. You can pay me in Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever. Um, so it all works. Uh, it also works inside of these wallets right now, plus many, many more coming. Okay, so after I have added my crypto addresses, I can then go and add my PFS hash. So there's a few different things that you can do here. Um, one is you can just you know build your website, build your application, copy and paste your hash, sign a message with your private key, write it to the blockchain. But you can also upload files. So this is actually using uh, Pinata in the background as an uploader. So shout out to Pinata Cloud. Uh, and we also have a template marketplace for non-technical users. And so this is kind of like our little decentralized Wix here. So you've got a little image editor, you can add text, whatever. Uh, this this is really bare bones right now. You're looking at like basically profile pages. You know, we're like, this is like 1995 GeoCities level of the internet type thing. Uh, but there's uh, blog uh, templates coming soon. There's e-commerce store templates. There's a need for marketplaces, forums, a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, and we've got um, more than 20,000 users who have registered domain names and they're looking for tools. So this is open. We're looking for people who um, want to build 
like IPFS template tools and offer them to our users, whether paid or unpaid, depending on what you're, uh, what you're focused on. So that's that. So now uh, if I want to go view a website, so we have a unstoppable Chrome extension. We're also integrating with several Chrome extensions, actually working on IPFS companion right now, working on several others. Um, but you can just type in, and by the way, can everybody hear me and see my screen and everything? Good. Yep, just fine. Okay, great. <laughs> just joking. Um, all right, so this is my Ether wallet crypto. So you've got a, essentially a fully functioning version of my Ether wallet. So we've got kyber.crypto where you can do an ETH die exchange. These are websites that are live right now. So we also have a demo browser. And the idea behind the demo browser is that this is supposed to inspire browsers to support IPFS uh, and uh, other decentralized, decentralized storage networks. So there's an IPFS node inside of this browser. So when I go to, you can go to my silly little, my silly little IPFS website, I can run the node, I can turn on the node and now when I go to the website, brad.crypto, I am storing and sharing it to the network too. So this is like a method for uh, unincentivized sharing of IPFS files. And the motive would be, uh, I like this website. And so you can imagine cases in the future where somebody really wants to put something out and it's popular but being censored. And then you could just have a whole bunch of people who care about this news story getting out or whatever and they can all be storing and sharing it. And all you would need is to add you know, one click. So this is uh, open source. Uh, the UI is terrible. So if anybody wants to fork it, commercialize it, play with it, do whatever you want, um, please, please do. Uh, yeah, so ways to view websites. There's the demo browser. Uh, there's extensions, uh, Opera for Android is live right now. So there's 80 million monthly unique uh, users who can type in a .crypto domain, uh, type in a .eth domain. They can uh, view websites that are on IPFS. So it works right now. Uh, hopefully coming soon, IPFS companion. And then we've got uh, many, many more uh, browser relationships that we're working on right now. And uh, I would say just that just in general, I think that um, the decentralized web community has turned up the heat and browsers are paying attention in 2020. Um, I, th I think I see uh, Juan nodding there. Um, this is not not true, I would say, in 2019, because I was you know, trying to talk to them then as well uh, as much. And I think it was definitely not true in 2018. So I think things are actually, uh, are actually heating up. So there's a bunch of stuff going on with uh, Mozilla right now as well with um, some projects they're looking at. So we're just we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of action coming from a lot of different places. Uh, so our stats, we've had more than two hundred thousand domains registered so far. Uh, there's more than four thousand IPFS websites that are launched. Yes, honestly, most of those are people trying to resell their domains right now. But there's about there's about two thousand that are not that um, that are people doing other things as well. And all of this has happened. Uh, essentially in the past two months since the website tool started going live and since the template tool started going live. So people are using and digging in, non-technical users are digging in when, when the tools are easy enough. Um, so yeah, more than 12,000 unique Ethereum addresses with domains. Uh, and these users are looking for tools to build IPFS websites more easily. So we've got traffic coming to our site. We've got these users that are looking for stuff to play with. So. Um, we would love to chat with anybody that thinks that their tool might be interesting to people who are trying to launch websites. Um, here are some companies that are building stuff with us right now. Uh, some missing pieces that we have identified, which I'm sure are on top of mind for a lot of folks here. Uh, well, decentralized database stuff. So we're looking very closely at what textile orbit and uh, and uh, GunDB are working on uh, in order to solve some of these problems. And uh, we also have this, uh, this paid hosting problem. 
So one of the themes that we've seen from uh, customers so far has been people who are formerly uh, relying on YouTube for their business and they have, uh, you know, they've been, especially crypto content has been getting censored on YouTube. And so uh, they're looking at the decentralized web. They kind of think it's not quite ready, but uh, they're looking and, you know, they'd be doing video, video hosting. So, you know, incentivization to make sure that that content works and it works fast is super important. So um, we're, we're really excited about Filecoin and we, we think there's uh, potentially a lot of demand here, especially if we can start getting, uh, getting video up because that's the stuff that's expensive. So if you want to, if you want to consume a lot of Filecoin, I think video customers are a good place to look. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we've been um, talking to a lot of crypto YouTubers. We actually have a need for a template that would allow them to easily launch their videos and maybe charge for them or launch their videos and um, do like a monthly subscription. Um, so that's an opportunity if anyone's interested. Uh, so yeah, um, please, uh, please build with us. Um, so I mentioned the templates. Um, oh, there's also some dev and deploy tools. You know, we're looking at uh, some stuff that, uh, that, that Fleek is doing, that Textile is doing, that a whole bunch of other folks are doing. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of cool deploy tools that are coming out right now. Um, we would love to point that stuff, um, you know, the best stuff to to our users, to our technical users who are you know who are looking for that. Um, domain resolution in any of your applications, wallets, browsers, apps. We'd love to talk about that. Uh, also, the browser. There's um, added a link to our GitHub. It's open source. Please fork. Please do whatever and. If you have an app with users and you might want to sell domains, um, talk to us as well. So yeah, that's um, that's it. Let me uh, let me uh, stop here and open up for questions. I'm sorry, I haven't really been watching the chat. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. Looks like you're getting uh, a question from Thomas. Um, unincentivized sharing um, as it relates to crypto um, crypto domains. Do you want yeah, to expand so, on that? Yeah, so the unincentivized sharing was uh, a reference to uh, the feature in the browser where you turn on the IPFS node. And the reason why you do it is because, you know, maybe the reason why you do it is because you can't, you know, view the website unless you agree to do that. That that could be like one way that somebody could implement it. But uh, the way that we defaulted to in our browser is uh, you go to a website and you just have the option. The button is there and you can just click store and share the website. And the idea is that the reason you would do that is because you care about what the website's saying. Um, so that that's all that's all I, I really meant. But I think there's there's probably room in the market for both ideas that you know you have you know you're incentivized sharing for your uptime and stuff like that but you could also imagine some sort of viral content or whatever that uh didn't even need the incentive um because people were just like you know this is great or maybe more realistically this is offensive or something else like that we well, i guess we don't really know what the what the what's going to be the viral moment for um yeah for decentralized storage stuff uh, um, and yes, I'll I'll, uh, I'll share the deck. I'm not sure where to do that, but I'll I'll do that. You can stick it in the chat or tweet it at us or whatever. Okay, cool. Question from Juan: Are there things you need help with from pinning services in terms of storage, backup, um, opportunities to help drive product success for you? Yeah. Uh, so pinning services. Yes. Uh, well, I, I think that for us, probably the biggest thing is going to be um, like uh, trustless subscriptions for hosting stuff. You know, so somebody wanting to reliably buy like one year of uptime. So all the stuff to make that happen, you know, and, you know, so this essentially like Filecoin plus subscriptions uh, stuff. So that's like a really big area. I know we've uh, chatted with the the textile folks, and it sounds like they're uh, working on some parts of that. Um, that's not something that we've been working on directly, so we're definitely uh, looking for help there. Um, so that's a really that's a really big area. I would say the other really big area is uh, the templates. So I know this is not necessarily the place that everyone's mind goes first. Um, how do I get non technical users to launch websites? 
But I would say that one of the things that I, one of the impressions I get when I talk to a lot of tooling companies is that their customer, theoretical customer, many of their theoretical customers are other tooling companies who are also equally competent and therefore don't require quite so many tooling companies yet because right now the pool of developers is much more the enthusiast category where like everyone knows what's going on. And so I think the, the forgotten opportunity here a little bit is these non-technical users who can crank out 4,000 websites in six weeks with just, you know, very, very simple, like our templates are terrible. Like we're gonna, we hope that they're all, tra they're all they, most of them are in the trash uh, in a few months, or at least modified to be, you know, it, it's definitely not anywhere near as good as what you would get going through a GoDaddy experience or, or something like that. Um, and there's all kinds of cool stuff that you could do here. Like, so we've got, you know, there's uh, like the marketplaces stuff, like similar to what kind of like the origin team has been working on. So that's, you know, a category uh, blog with like a paywall is like super obvious. Um, we're working on versions of that, but we would embrace other people, um, you know, launching those as well. And, and again, you can, what, what happens on our site is you buy a domain and then you go, what's next? I know I'm supposed to do something with IPFS, what's next? And there's a large number of domains being, being bought to some extent by people thinking that, you know, this is going to be, a, you know, a future, you know, important registry, but there's a lot of people who are saying like, I was around for the 1990s, 2000s phase. I'm trying to figure out what parking tools look like here. I'm trying to figure out um, how to, I'm trying to figure out how to be first. And I would launch a hundred if I had the right type of things, you know? So we're seeing a lot of that stuff. Um, so long answer, but I think the templates are the place where you would get the most kind of immediate, uh, immediate jolt from um, the dev tools, maybe less so. Totally hear you. I definitely, I, I tried the experience of like forestry to flake to decentralized name um, and it works surprisingly well. So you just grabbed one of like the Hugo default templates off of forestry. I think there's a, a number of those like static site templates. It'd be really cool to just like, boom, like literally glue those things together where you can like one click, like it spins it up, it puts it in your GitHub repo, it connects it to fleek so that it's put up on IPFS and then it updates your your domain name, like those little bits of like glue tooling that make it super seamless for everyone to get started. Um, I think are pretty amazing uh, and would love to, I feel like you guys are already headed straight in that direction with like templates built into the, um, the domain name registry and, and all those things there. So maybe forestry is the next partner there. Yeah, would definitely, would, I definitely need to need to look closer at forestry. And I think that just to, to jump on that, cause I think you're, you're totally right. That's the goal. It requires a lot more stuff to be connected in together. And so we're really focused on that uh, right now. So we'd love to probably work with everybody, honestly, um, in some way. And I also think that there's um, like a motivation, whatever, there's maybe to challenge the decentralized web community. Uh, DeFi already has this and it's awesome. Like the interconnectedness across all the dApps with the Web3 experiences being consistent across all these apps is amazing. And it's way further ahead than where the decentralized web is right now in terms of UX. So I, I, I kind of see that as like a, I don't know, a little bit of inspiration that like it does, it does, it's starting to work. And I think we should be more like that. All of our stuff should very easily stick together and be able to go in these like packages across all these apps. And that should, that should be the vision. So it's basically like we just need to like pack up dozens of different tools all together and then make it really easy for everyone to access it. So, yeah. Modularity and composability. I love it. Um, yeah, it was super cool. I, I only was recently digging into all of the... Um, all the DeFi tools that have put their front ends up on IPFS, a lot of which are using um, unstoppable domains, which is super cool. Um, and so it was really cool to, to dive deeper into that space. And it's like, oh, wow, this is super critical for truly having a decentralized application with a smart smart contract backend. Yeah, one that just came up, I think it was actually earlier today, they found, they got it up, which was um, a, a Vulkan feed stock crypto. I should have put it in the thing, which is a chain link feed. And so it, if, if you think about, if you think about long-term relying on some sort of decentralized Oracle system, 
you're then also going to need to make sure that there's no reliance on this web infrastructure that can just be taken down. Otherwise, you're still going to wind up with your data feed turned off at some point. Um, so it's the dApps that it's the most obvious for, I guess. You know, why, if you ask like who, who's the decentralized web customer that absolutely needs to needs it today, I think it's the dApps probably first because um, they're also onboarded to the tooling. And then probably next would be like the like the political distance, like the um, like HK Map Live, like the that sort of stuff for the Hong Kong and things like that. Totally agree. Any other questions for Brad? Yes, yes, there are more <laughs> questions. Great, write them down. <laughs> All the anticipation. Drum roll. Would you put bounties on templates? I, uh, yeah, yeah. We uh, we have a bounty up. I I hope it's still up. Um, we had a thousand dollar bounty up previously. Um, but yeah, we absolutely do. Um, so, yeah, I see Juan going. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely. Uh, publish some numbers and we'll also, I think, make them bigger. That's a good idea. Awesome. I want to play Roblox. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I just I just noticed one other one from uh, Juan about about tooling that would make our lives easier, or maybe I even addressed it partially. But I just realized there's also this other thing, which is um, it, it would be good to have good user flows for um, for you know like deploy stuff. Um, and I know there's a lot to that, and there's a lot of people that are working on great stuff. And part of the problem then is, is then like, who do you point to? Like, where, you know, how do you just point to something simple that allows a developer to figure it out? So that's a, that's a problem. And we don't really, unlike the templates, we don't, the UI of that, like how do you get it to a developer is maybe a little less clear, so. Question on topic. Uh, so given moderation being, being a problem, how do you see the moderation question evolving in, in the crypto domains you have? Like I imagine fairly quickly, you, you um, people start, once, once these, um, these domains like really, really work that you were saying um, various groups that have reasons to worry about censorship are going to start using uh, all of these domains. Uh, how do you see moderation evolving through these things? Or is it just kind of like a wild west? Um, or or uh, do you imagine like the, the, there will be some some way of societies moderating um, how names point point to a content? Yeah, totally. Um, so we have a philosophical view that the base layer should not have any censorship or filtering or anything of any kind that basically the technology should not decide what's okay and what's not because ultimately you'll then need to rely on some person or some group of people or some company or whatever to do that filtering and then it will just be abused It'll just like the regular system is. So it's basically like the only way to have a secure system is to have tools that take no opinion at the base layer, but then you have the, the result of the, the world we live in will be browsers. So like, you know, browsers are a point that may need to make decisions about say like, do I wanna not show, I mean, they're, they're definitely gonna wanna not show things that are, so just, just so people understand, like the record can be on the blockchain. So I've got my domain name, I've got my IPFS hash on the blockchain. Domain name can't be taken away from me. Nobody can update my record other than me but a browser can simply ignore, decide not to read that record. So what the effect will be in the real world is that you could have 99.99% of uh, browsers or other places that you're allowing you to view websites saying this is not okay. And then you might need to view some open source or extremist or whatever tool in order to get access. And it could still be illegal uh, just by virtue of ac accessing it, it could still be a crime in the place that you live. So that can, that'll still wind up being, for the things that are anti, super antisocial, that'll still wind up being in the dark depths of the internet, just like it is today, also not completely stopped. 
Um, but I think that the benefit that you get um, in this new paradigm is that you'll have uh, multiple versions of what's okay to say of free speech. Right now you have one version on the regular web. Uh, it's essentially whatever's adjudicated by governments and whoever pressuring the registries and the registrars and, and uh, web hosting companies versus a future where you could have like a on-chain filtered list of, or, you know, block list, you know, list of bad domains uh, and applications can read that list and they can share and they can decide, okay, well, you know, I'm going to out. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this smart contract, which hopefully is, you know, being adjudicated by an ACLU or something like that. And I'm going to say like, they're going to deter determine free speech and I'm going to rely on them. And then if I decide that they're no longer ethical, I can switch to another one or I can provide filters in my browser for my users where they can accept left-wing version of where free speech line is versus right-wing version versus maybe even no line um, whatsoever, or you choose the line and you could have dozens of different versions of, uh, of the internet that we all kind of chaotically move between if we want to. Um, I think it, it's not that dissimilar from how the current internet works or how the current behavior of the internet works already. The difference is, is that all the power is sitting in the individual users now and you can't have, you know, companies allowing movie producers to go and just take people off. Like right now you have all kinds of weird ways that people manipulate the, the current system. So uh, I'm not super worried about it because I think that it's a better world that way. I think that we'll get to, I think we'll have like really good adjudicators of free speech because that'll be a business opportunity. Like somebody actually, we actually need this service provider to come in and be like new blockchain focused ACLU and analyze and determine where the line for free speech is. And then the Facebooks and the YouTubes and all these other companies don't have to, they can just hit an endpoint and get their, you know, answer on where the line for free speech is. And they don't have to be the moral arbiters anymore. And that's a better world.